Hey everyone, welcome back to another projectile motion problem, example 2. A fire hose held near the ground shoots water at a speed of 6.9 meters per second. At what angle or angles should the nozzle point in order that the water land 2.1 meters away? Why are there two different angles? And sketch the trajectories. So this is the image given in the original problem. You've got your hose, the water is going up and down in a parabolic motion. Um, it goes a horizontal range of 2.1 meters, and we're charged with finding this angle right here. Okay, so what angle is the water shot up at? So first things first, let's write down what we're given. Okay, so we're given the horizontal range, so we'll call that x. So that's 2.1 meters. And we're given the initial speed of 6.9 meters per second, v naught. Okay, acceleration in the x direction is always zero for projectile motion because due to the definition of projectile motion, the only force acting on it is gravity, which leads us to our next given acceleration in the y direction. That's going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Now here's the thing. I haven't yet defined my positive direction, so why don't I go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to let down be to the, uh, pardon me, let down be positive and right be positive. So I'm going to show that with the following diagram. Okay, so if that's positive, that means the initial speed v naught is negative. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So because the water starts and stops at the same vertical height, I'm going to go ahead and say that you know what, y equals y naught which is zero. I'm going to let that be the zero height. Okay. And again, there's no acceleration in the x direction. So okay, let's get started. Um, so we're trying to find out the angles, right, that the nozzle should point. Now, whenever you're doing projectile motion problems, the shortest part of the problem is always the x direction because there's no acceleration. So, I mean, we're going to start with that. So we know that since there's no acceleration in the x direction, Distance is equal to speed in the x direction times time. Okay, so we need to find the angle. So let's let's just uh, let's rewrite this a little bit differently. Okay, so v naught x. Let's let's actually break this up into its component. You know v naught right here. It's on an angle. So we've got v zero. Okay. So if you were to draw that here, v naught. You can break v naught, which is a vector quantity, into its components of x and y. Okay, so the x component and the y component. And you can see that they make up the two other sides of a right angle triangle. Okay, so you've got your v naught x here, your v naught y, and here's our theta naught that we're looking for, that we need to determine. Okay, so the v naught x, if you look at this, this is adjacent to the angle based on the hypotenuse. So v naught x is going to be v naught cos theta, and then we put our t there. So x is v naught cos theta times t. Now, here's the thing. We know x, right? We know v naught. We're looking for theta naught. Okay, so we need to determine t. t is going to help us get there. So this is the other part in the projectile motion problem. The only thing in common to both angles, well, to both directions, pardon me, other than the angle is the time. Okay, so in order to get to the time, you need to start solving this in the y direction. This is going to get us going. Okay, so let's let's jump to the y direction here. Now, because there is acceleration in the y direction, there's going to be a lot more math going on here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use the following kinematics formula that has everything that we know, y, y naught, acceleration in the y direction, v naught, y specifically, and time. That way we know everything except the one quantity. So here it is, y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus one half acceleration y t squared. So it's the same kinematics equation you're used to seeing, except we've personalized it to fit the y direction. Okay, now based on what we defined earlier, y and y naught are both going to be set equal to zero, where we let the initial height be zero. So zero equals zero plus now the next part, v naught y, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as is for now. Um, now the acceleration in the y direction, it is 9.8 meters per second squared. 
Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute that with a G for now. The key with really long physics problems is that you don't want to necessarily plug in the numbers right away. You want to work with the symbols and so it's easier to cancel them out and simplify the problems. And then later when you get to the final part where you can't simplify the formula anymore, you go ahead and you just plug in your numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Okay, um, so notice we've got a t squared. We've got a t, and you've got an expression in front of the t squared, an expression in front of the t. Okay, we need to solve for t. We know g, we know we can figure, well, v not y is another expression, but the idea is this. Um, if you've recognized this as a quadratic formula, or as a quadratic expression, you're right. So we have 1 half g t squared, plus v not y t. Okay, so if you look at this as a quadratic, where you have 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c, okay, you can see that your c is 0, okay, your b is your v not y, and your a is your 1 half g. So we're going to determine an expression for our t, which is taking the x place in this situation. Uh, and that expression for t is going to have to be determined using the quadratic formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I did sing it in a previous video, so I won't be doing it again, but uh, go ahead and check. I don't recall quite which video it was, but um, if anything, you know what, here's the, here's the formula once again. Okay, so I'm going to solve it for t. So t equals negative b plus or minus uh, square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, um, and based on our original expression, let's just slide that up here for a sec. Um, based on our expression a, it's this value right here, 1 half g. Okay, our b is the value here, v not y, and our c is 0. So we're going to go ahead and plug that into our formula. So let's shift that back up. Okay, so t equals <clears throat> negative v naught y plus or minus the square root v naught y squared minus 4 times 1 half g times 0 all over 2 1 half g. Okay, now that looks uh, quite um, long, Let's say long, um, but this is actually going to simplify quite a bit. You notice the second half under the, um, <coughs> pardon me, under the radical sign, there's a zero multiplied by two other items. That makes this entire product zero, so that goes away. All right, so that makes our next line minus v naught y plus or minus the square root of v naught y squared. So actually, I didn't need that entire line. And in our denominator, something that we can actually simplif uh, simplify from our previous step, 2 times a half is 1. Okay, so that leaves us with simply g in the denominator. Okay, now notice up here we've got a square root of v naught y squared. Okay, so the square root of something squared is just the original item itself. So our next line is going to be minus v naught y plus or minus v naught y over g. Okay, so the plus or minus implies that you have two solutions. So the first one would be negative v naught y plus v naught y, which becomes zero over g. Zero divided by a number is zero. So our first solution is t equals zero. And the other solution would be negative v naught y minus v naught y. Okay, so negative 2 v naught y over g. And think about that for a second. That has to make sense, that minus there, because remember we defined down to be positive. So v naught y, because down is positive, v naught y is going upwards that's going to be considered negative in our problem. You can't have a negative time, so the minus here compensates for that. Okay, so why do we have two solutions? Okay, so 
Remember, we're solving for time at a specific point, right? So when you achieve a certain angle, okay? So the idea is this, t equals zero is the initial instant of projection. And this t right here is the final one that we're actually going to plug into our final formula or your final expression. The nice thing with the projectile motion problems is that there's a lot of symmetry, right? So whenever you get two answers, it's not always that you need to discard one. You simply need to understand uh, where they fit into the overall scheme of the problem. Okay, and so we've got our T expression. Okay, so we can go ahead and plug that back into our original X, right? You remember that? So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So our original x expression was the following. x is equal to v naught cos theta naught t. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug our t value, this t value inside here. Okay, so x is equal to v naught cos theta naught. Okay, and our t again is our minus 2 v naught y over g. Now just like we did earlier with the v naught x, we're going to take a v naught y and rewrite it in its appropriate form. So based on our earlier page right here, so remember we did that right angle triangle, v naught y is considered to be the opposite of this angle right here, so that involves sine of theta. Okay, hence, v naught y is going to be equal to the hypotenuse v naught times sine theta naught. So let's, let's put that back away. Okay, so v naught y is v naught sine theta naught. A lot of math in these problems, a lot of uh, things you're going to see very soon. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 2, I'm going to bring it to the front. Okay, so minus 2 uh, sine theta naught cos theta naught. And if we put that V naught in there, you're going to have a V naught and a V naught multiplied together, giving you a V naught squared. And you still have that 1 over G you're multiplying by. Okay. Now, something you need to recognize. Right here, your 2 sine theta naught, cos theta naught, that's a trig identity. If you haven't memorized it yet, it's a good idea to memorize it. Okay, so the trig identity is uh, 2 sine theta cos theta equals sine 2 theta. It's a double angle formula. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this in the following way. Okay. X equals V naught squared sine 2 theta. V naught sine 2 theta over G. Okay, now we're looking for theta naught, so we need to rearrange this formula for theta naught. So the way you do that is you need to multiply the G over to the X side, divide by V naught squared. Okay, so let's do that. Sine 2 theta naught is equal to xg over v naught squared. Now we have actually simplified as much as we can. Okay, we're looking for theta naught. g we know, x we know, v naught squared we know. Okay, so let's start plugging that in. Um, x is 2.1 meters. g is 9.80 meters per second squared. V naught squared is minus 6.9 meters per second squared. When you calculate that all out, you should get sine 2 theta naught is equal to 0.43266, roughly. Okay, give me a sec here, grab another sheet. All right. So this is our double angle. Now, you got to be really careful here. You don't want to just divide by 2. 
Um, you do the same thing you always do with the sine of an angle or cosine of an angle. This is the argument of sine. Okay, so in order to get the argument by itself, you need to take the inverse sine of both sides. So you do 2 theta naught is equal to inverse sine of 0 0.43266. When you do that, you're going to get 2 theta naught is equal to 25.611 degrees. And now in order to get theta by itself, all you do is divide both sides by 2. Simple as that. Okay, so divide by 2, divide by 2. Okay, so let's, let's go up. So then you end up with theta naught is equal to 12.8056 degrees. Now, that's one angle. Okay? We should be getting two angles out of this question. Okay? The idea is this. Because this, you see this trajectory here for the hose, it can be minimum zero, which obviously it cannot be zero. It needs to be greater than zero, but it has to be less than a 90 degree, the vertical line up here. Okay, so if one angle is 12.6 degrees, then the way you find the other angle is you take that maximum amount, 90, and you subtract the angle you just determined, which is going to be the 12.8056. Okay, if you do 90 minus 12.8056, you're going to end up with 77.1944 degrees. So that's your second angle. 77.1944 degrees. Okay. The idea is this. The reason why you need two angles is because both angles give you the same range. Okay. Now, one last step that we need to do is account for sig figs. Okay, so in the original question, we had two sig figs. So simplifying this to two sig figs, we are going to get well around 13 degrees for the 12.8, and we're going to have 77 for the 77.194. Okay, so theta naught is equal to 13 degrees and 77 degrees. And that does it for this video, guys. There are your two angles. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give that like button a click and subscribe to this channel so that you never miss a video from Physics in the Flesh. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and talk to you later.